All right, ladies and gentlemen, what happened in Ohio and a white noise movie review? Just gonna read this to you real quick. Thanks for checking in. So first and foremost, I wanna say, and my heart goes out, I'm reading my notes here. First and foremost, my heart goes out to those affected by the train derailment in Ohio. I used to live close to railroad tracks in the city some years ago. And no, I'm not a hobo. And I could tell you firsthand that the sound of a train derailing is something you'll never forget. I can still picture in my mind what I was doing when it happened. It had to be between 1 and 2.30 a.m. in the middle of the night. And I woke up to go in the kitchen and grab me some water. I remember standing at the kitchen sink and uh, looking out the window and just going on with my usual ritual in the morning getting ready for work and at this time I lived about as close as you could to the military base or a major military base as you can without actually being stationed on the base so I was familiar with the sounds of explosives discharging but this sound was different and was one of the most horrific noises you'd ever hear you heard the train brake squealing then a large boom followed by the clangling sound of metal the actual derailment was about a mile away and some coal hoppers, I guess that's how you describe them, had derailed. And the next day when I went to the site, you could see these cars were turned over and the tracks were twisted like silly putty. And I'm, I'm being dead serious about that. It was, it was a mess. It looks like something out of a movie. So what happened in Ohio? What caused it? I seen some comments posted on various YouTube channels referencing a movie called White Noise and the almost perfect similarities between parts of that movie and reality. Now one of the best comments that I saw was from someone saying this is how you protect yourself from uh, future karma for you and your future generations by revealing what your plans and agendas are. I'm not going to however stay on that topic. I'm just going to stay in my lane when it comes to that. So. But let me t tell you this, let me just say, as far as that movie is concerned, don't waste your time with this movie. Uh, you know how you hear Christians say, don't put that stuff in your spirit or watch your eye gate and your ear gate. Well, this is that kind of movie here. Uh, it's not a good movie by no means at all. I was watching the beginning of it and it was pretty hard to decipher what the heck was going on it just seemed like it's just a bad movie so uh you know nothing can be further from the truth when you hear those christians say that uh protect your eye gate and your ear gate so you want to do that with this particular movie i suggest you don't watch it it's just a crock now i'm a huge fan of short so you know i'm open-minded and i myself also have a warped sense of humor and I like a little comedy that pushes the envelope and is offbeat. But this movie was horrible. I've seen some weird movies in my life such as Dial Man, Compile, The Shape of Water, Bad Taste, Big Fish, Everything, Everywhere at Once, and uh, Graffiti Bridge and Purple Rain. And Under the Cherry Moon. Nah, I'm just kidding about that. I'm a big Prince fan. Those wasn't that bad. But uh, yeah. These movies that I just named here, outside of the Prince movies, they was hard to watch. You really got to follow along to see what's going on with those movies. But they became some of my favorites. Heck, I even walked out of the movie theater while I was watching Pulp Fiction. Later to discover it was actually a great movie. And another movie that I watched that took a while to get going and get into was a Fish Called Wanda. I remember in the theater, I was like, okay, this ain't so bad after all. But just when the movie started gaining traction, the film snapped from the projector in the movie theater. And we got right, refunded and I never finished seeing that movie, which I'll get back to watching one day. But this White Noise project was hideous, however. And is on my list of three movies I never care to see again in my life. Uh, the first one is Heredity, which is number one not because it was a bad movie though it was actually a pretty good movie but it creeped the hell out of me especially at the end 
I feel some things you shouldn't put on screen, and that was one such movie. So it's not up there for being a horrible movie. It just kind of terrified the crap out of me. Another movie was Midsommar, which was, that wasn't that bad of a movie either, but it was just confusing and just kind of weird. Still, it was entertaining and maybe would have been easier to watch had I, never mind. It was just weird and the women walking around in a circle freaked me out as well. But this one, White Noise, still has me wondering what happened to two hours of my life yesterday. And I couldn't bear watching any more of it. I saw a lot of people put in their comment section pertaining to this movie that they made it through the first half of it. But they couldn't make it any further. And I'm one of those people too. And uh, so if you're going to watch it for the similarities of the current events, save yourself some brain cells and don't. I can compare it. To how most YouTubers feel about their first couple of videos when they begin, my videos included. Now, to what I think may have had something to do with it, and this is the part where my humor kicks in, and you know, not making light of any situation at all, just some funny thoughts about it. And remember, I have a twisted sense of humor, and I'm a short fan. So, here's 10 things that possibly could have happened number 10 the conductor was focusing on those balloons in the sky instead of following the smith system number nine they heard a knock at the cabin number eight shrinkflation number seven they got the news of the Kyrie Irving trade Number six, they were trying to figure out one of my word scrambles. Number five, is that Elvis? Number four, I just had to stop to tell Regina King I loved her role in The Harder They Fall. Number three, it's just Thomas the Tank Engine and him controlling his anger management. Number two, was that a ballot box laying on the tracks? And number one, blame that hobo in the video I just uploaded. All right, thanks for checking this out, folks. And uh, like I said, my heart goes out to those people involved in that situation. I've been in situations where you had to evacuate before because things happen and it's not fun and it, you know, shakes your life up a little bit. So make sure that you get uh, prepped up. Follow some of the advice that these preppers are giving to you on these prepping channels on here. And what I say about prepping is not always going to be the SHTF event that gets you. It's going to be that one or two hours where you may wind up being stuck on the freeway. As in the case with Tucson, Arizona and what happened in Georgia a few years ago down in Atlanta. Those are the ones that get you. It's not the major SHTF because with the major SHTF or major worldwide event, Everybody's going to be in the same boat pretty much uh, Some are going to be better prepped than others, but we all will be in that together But when it's you sitting on that interstate in your vehicle and you're sitting there for three or four hours and can't get off You need to have some supplies with you. So check out some of the prepper channels um, I'll give you a link in one of the video at the end of this video as well As far as where you can look at getting some items that you may need to prep with but yeah, just be prepared and like I said, it could be an event where you may just have to leave your house and bug out for about four or five days. Or you could be sitting on the freeway. Uh, you could be caught in a snowstorm, could be caught in a blizzard. It's just those, you know, don't let you, basically what I'm saying is don't let your life be based up on your failure to be unprepared. And you lose your life within two or three hours because you were unprepared. All right. Thanks, folks. I'm out. Enjoy the rest of your day.